I've got a PhD in chemistry and I'm a science communicator. I have a YouTube channel, I have a website and I'm on Instagram under Lab Muffin Beauty Science. I started my blog when I was doing my PhD, which was in medicinal chemistry. At the time, I was really interested in skincare for myself and looking at makeup, and so I was in a bunch of different Facebook groups. And because people knew I was a scientist, they would ask me questions and I'd go off and research it. And then I'd come back and be like, look, this is what I found, it seems to be safe, this is why. There were a lot of blogs which did have information, but a lot of it wasn't really scientifically accurate. There would be people asking questions about if ingredients were dangerous. After a while, I realized I was answering the same questions repeatedly, so I thought I'll start a website where I can debunk some of these myths. And this was back in 2011. So there wasn't that much information online about the science behind skincare products, behind beauty products. So that's where I started, just trying to answer other people's questions and trying to maybe bring a bit more of science into the internet. So sunscreen is a product that you put on your skin to protect against UV from the sun. You can think of it a bit like paint. Let's say you put it on a piece of wood and you want to cover up the color of the wood and you cover it up with a paint which has ingredients in it that absorb particular colors. Sunscreen is very similar. It is basically a product which has lots of ingredients in it which absorb UV instead of colored light. And so when you're covering it on your skin, you're putting these ingredients that will absorb the UV before it hits your skin. That UV gets absorbed, turns into a harmless amount of heat, and so the UV doesn't have a chance to get into your skin and do all the nasty things it does. So the more you apply, the more essentially molecules of UV absorbing ingredients you're getting on your skin. Often we don't apply enough. A teaspoon of sunscreen will cover one body part. So a teaspoon is about five mils, which is quite a lot. So you need one teaspoon for your face, you need one teaspoon for each arm, one for the front, one for the back, and one for each leg. In Australia, it's regulated as a therapeutic product. So there's particular things on the sunscreens that you can look out for that are properly tested. Australia definitely has some of the strictest regulations. SPF is properly tested using a laboratory test. It's tested on actual people. If you have an SPF 15, if you apply it at the proper amount, which is two milligrams per square centimeter, we'll only let through 1 15th of the UV. SPF 50, that's going to let through 1 50th, but that's if you apply at the proper amount. Most people apply less, which means more gets in, and so generally you want to go for as high an SPF as you can. With water resistance, that is another regulated term on the sunscreen labels, that is also tested in a lab. Just because it says four hours water resistant, that doesn't mean you can stay in the water for four hours and you'll be fine. The general advice is, if you are doing watery activities, then you want to put on a water resistant sunscreen and when you get out of the water, you want to immediately reapply. Two hours is probably fine, but if you're doing something more active, then you should probably look to reapply more often and also use other forms of sun protection too, like hats and clothing. You choose a product that you like cosmetically. You want to apply as much as you can, apply it liberally. You are going to get a better result with a 30 if you like and applying lots of it than applying a 50 thinly. Choose a product that you like, 30 or 50, apply lots of it. As a product itself, it's incredibly safe. We've had it now for 30, 40 years of people using it consistently and daily and we're not seeing any harms associated with its use. So a lot of the time when you see on the news or on social media that sunscreens might be causing cancer or reproductive problems, a lot of the time that is based on a single study or a single data point where a really large amount of sunscreen was tested on rats or on cells. Regulators and toxicologists are looking for the point at which that sunscreen becomes dangerous. So they're putting really large amounts of sunscreen on these cells or feeding it to rats and then seeing when it starts to become unsafe. And then they go off and do the calculations and conversions and they work out what percentage is safe. And it's not even known if that sort of change will actually have any sort of real harmful effect. It might just be just a random change. There's just so much misinformation online and there's just not enough science communicators to try to overcome it. It's just become a lot harder to do our jobs. There's a lot more harassment as well. I think it is a big public health investment that just hasn't really been put to its full potential. 
Science communicators kind of assume that if they give the science, then that should be enough. But that's not what works. We have to learn these marketing techniques that a lot of the people making misinformation are using and use them for our advantage.